Family Fortunes number 23, VCR 9066, 1981 Power, part one, take one. with the New York family from Hale Wood, Mike, Jackie, Norman, and in Canada. And from South Wales, the Evans family, Don, Linda, Philip, Kath, and Liz, all here to play Family Fortunes. And among tonight's hidden prizes are a deluxe food mixer, a radio cassette with built-in television, a sewing machine, a picnic hamper with food and wine and a pair of binoculars, a vacuum cleaner, and a tabletop dishwasher. And here is your host, Bob Bunkhouse. Thank you, FFers. You are a super audience to give us that welcome. You have come to the only place where you can see two families, the only place where you can see two families battling it out, going into battles so you can get the most. I say the only place. Of course, you could see my in-laws coming over to our house for Christmas dinner. And you get the same effect. Last Christmas, you wouldn't believe it. As soon as they saw the turkey, it took them three minutes to pull it apart and eat it. Three minutes. My wife was thrilled at saving her the trouble of cooking it. Good, 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 good. All the answers we've collected in our survey have random hidden prizes that hatched them. They're all stored in our big calculating machine, Mr. Babbage. Isn't he big? I, at home, I've got a pocket calculator. I caught her last night going through my pockets. <laughs> so we've got the fortunes. We've got the top-rated game show on ITV. We've got the others breathing down our necks. So, Bob's your uncle. Well done. Great to see you. Welcome to the show. Yes, you're most welcome. Where do you come from, Don? Wales. Wales. South Wales, North Wales, Middle... Yeah, South Wales. South good Wales, good people. What do you do down there? Um, I've got a double glazing business. Double glazing. <laughs> Would you introduce us to your family, please, John? Yes, this is my daughter, Linda. Hello, Linda. Her husband, Philip. Nice to see you, Philip. The youngest, Catherine. Right. Followed by Elizabeth. Y these are your daughters? They are. Yes, they are. Oh, <laughs> look at the Mr. Evans' daughters. Thank heavens. <laughs> Poor little girl. <laughs> Very good little bunch of them. You two are in the police. Student. You're a student, you're a student, and you are? Student nurse. A student nurse. Which hospital? Neath General. Neath General. I had a friend went there, had a terrible accident. He went in to have his tonsils removed, and they turned the table round. <laughs> <laughs> now, be fair. Be fair. You wouldn't like it if somebody whipped your big toes off. Let's meet the widow family. I come from... Uh... Halewood, Liverpool. Oh, Halewood, yes, of course. Famous place. Quite a few comedians have come from that part. I hope you're another. <laughs> I don't think so, Bob. <laughs> no? What do you no. do? I'm a chemical process operator, Bob. Oh, that means that you... Uh, make chemicals for medicines and drugs, uh, working with chemists in a chemical... Factory. Have you ever handled a uh, Spantran? I can't say as I have, Bob. Oh, that's a... Oh, I'm amazed. I'm amazed. Spantran. Everybody knows Spantran. It's a half Spanish fly and half tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes you chase the girls, but if you can't catch them, you don't care. <laughs> Can we meet your family? Yes, Bob. My wife, Jackie. Hello, Jackie. Mm -hmm. My brother, Norman. Norman. Hello, Bob. His wife, Anne. Mm -hmm. Great to see you, Anne. And my sister, Catherine. Uh, you're lovely and tall, aren't you? Do tall guy girls lie longer in bed, I ask myself. But you... <laughs> the, the, the whole family is, is quite a tall family. Elegant. Elegant. And the whole family has the same enthusiasm. Is that right, Catherine? Yes. What is it? Both. Which kind? <laughs> Crown green. <laughs> Crown green, which is different. Ah, now I know there is a difference. Could you explain it for our viewers? Well, crown green is played on a square green. You can play on any part of it, and it's, it's slightly sloped. Have you got that? It's got a, sort of like a bump. Crown. Well, well where does link bowling is? Flat. Just on a straight shallow. Do you understand shallow, that? Normally it's flat, but it has a slight bump in the middle. Imagine Lorraine Chase after Christmas dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's your game. Also tonight, Family Fortunes is. John, in the place, please. Mike, Mike and Don. Each one another. 
100 people surveyed. Gentlemen, we have the top five answers on Mr. Babbage, our computer. We've got a couple of hidden prizes up there, too. I hope you can get them. Hit the button when you're sure you have an answer. The, uh, the question I'm going to ask will appear printed on the bottom of the screen. That's for people who cannot hear my voice. What do people talk about when they run into someone they haven't seen for a long time? The weather. The weather. They run into someone they haven't seen for a long time and they talk about the weather. Yes, they do. Four... <laughs> Eleven people said that to us, but... There are three answers we got that were more popular in our survey. People haven't seen one another for a long time. They bump into one another. What do they talk about? The health. Their health, OK. If health is more popular in our survey, if it's there at all, why, you could take control of the board. They discuss their health. And there it is. It is more popular. Will your family play or pass on this question? Play, says Norman. Yes, the general consensus of opinion, Don, is that the wee dogs want to play. Jackie, what do you think they talk about? Their family. Oh, yes, of course. They've old friends. They they meet for after a long time and they talk about their family. <laughs> yes, they do. Second most popular answer we had brings you a private prize, a hidden prize. Out it comes, a deluxe food mixer. Food <laughs> <laughs> oh, Yeah, so they do. They reminisce about those old days in the schoolhouse. Yes, old times. Good answer. Their childhood? Yes, that's not the same as old times at all. Old times are the times you've shared together, but when you talk about childhood, <laughs> you get a duck. Mmm, that's tough. Only one life lost, Catherine. And I can give you three seconds to come up with a subject that people talk about when they run into someone they haven't seen for a long time. Mmm, we lost a life there, oh dear. Could it be the job they're doing, Bob? The, the job, job they're doing is a good answer, Mike. If job is the answer, you get the value of that correct answer plus the eighty-seven pounds in the bank. We're looking for their work. <laughs> yes, the job is there. Well done. There you go, Don. That was well played, huh? The funny thing is, I ran into a fellow this morning I haven't seen for twenty years, and he recognised me, so I paid him. <laughs> On to the game. You know, that was a very good answer we had there, Jobs, answer number five, and I'm delighted to tell Mike Weddock that he's won a radio cassette with a built-in television mic. <laughs> Ladies, 100 people surveyed, top five answers on the board, top three answers on the board. You've got three to find. Name a writer of books for children. Enid Blyton. Enid Blyton, are you there? <laughs> top answer. Wins you a children's bicycle and a giant teddy bear. Oh. <laughs> Will you play or pass? Yes, yeah. yeah, so I want to tell you. We've got to find your answers. Of course, I'll confer in. Philip, name a famous writer of books for children. Hans Anderson. Oh, yes. Have you read Hans Anderson? No, they're white, and why call me Anderson? Famous writer of books for children. Beatrix Potter. Beatrix Potter is a lovely idea. Let's see if she's there. Miss Potter? <coughs> My goodness, we got a lost a life there. Um, we only need the one correct answer. Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens wrote some lovely stories. Were they for children? Did the public think so? Charles? <coughs> they didn't. Lost two lives. Now the Weedock family is planning to steal the money. 89 pounds in the bank. What does he Did he write? What does he Walt Disney is your guess, and Walt Disney certainly is the result. Uh, he's there. A name that is given to the authorship of many famous films. Disney! <laughs> Not there. Mike? Is it Mabel Lucy, Lucy Atwell? Mabel Lucy Atwell. If Mabel Lucy Atwell is the missing answer, you get the £89 in the bank. If Mabel Lucy Atwell is not the third answer, then the money goes to the Evans family. Mabel Lucy Atwell! <laughs> not there. It's your money gone. <laughs> Any other ideas? <laughs> Here's the third most popular answer we had from the British public. A. A. Milne, who wrote that lovely story when he was living between the glue factory and the gas works called the house at Pooh Corner. <laughs> Let's play on with round three of Family Fortune. <laughs> okay, Philip. Here's Norman. Norman. There's Philip. 100 people surveyed, top six answers on the board. The capital letter V. Imagine it. It looks the same when reflected in a mirror. I won't turn my hand round, but you know what I mean. Name another capital letter of the alphabet of which this is true. 
Oh. Oh, oh looks exactly the same in reverse. Let's see if it's there. Oh, oh, oh! It's second most popular answer. With... And it carries a prize. You've got a picnic hamper with food and wine and a pair of binoculars to watch the birds. <laughs> there is a more popular answer, Norman. A. 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 If A is the top answer, which is the same in the mirror, you're absolutely right, then you have control of the board. A? Yes, it's number one answer when you play your part. They want to play on this one. Yeah, I thought you might. This is one of those lovely ones, but you've got to find out what the public thought. They put the alphabet in a certain <laughs> order of priority. W. A W is the same. Yes, certainly. How about a W? Yes, there it is. Twelve people out of a hundred said W. Um. Catherine? I can give you three seconds, Catherine. S. S. I think still the audience doesn't agree with you, and I don't think I do, but did the public say S? They did not. Mike. B. B. Well, again, I don't agree with you that B looks the same the other way around, but did the public think so? They didn't. You've lost two lives. The Evans family could steal. H. H. H is a good one. It is the same reverse. Did the public think of H? They did. And it wins you a tabletop dishwasher. <laughs> Norman. T. T. Is T answer number three or number six? Yes, it is. Number six. Only one answer to find. M. 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 It is there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well played. You have 89 pounds. You have 185. And as part one sinks slowly in the ratings, only to be rescued by the dramatic events in part two. Strange things will be revealed. Will the Evans family physically attack and murder the Weedock family in part two? What is the identity of the mystery woman in the audience who's laughing at my jokes? Will the producer's sex change operation work? And if so, what will he decide to be? All these questions and many others will be revealed in the second half of this intense drama entitled Family. <laughs> Family Fortunes number 23, BTR 9066, 1981 Power, part two, take one. playing family no we stopped while you were away we stopped we waited for you over here the Evans family uh, they have a, uh, have 89 pounds and they won a child's bike and a t teddy bear what one of you has and a picnic camper and binoculars and over here the Weedock family have done even better they have 185 pounds in cash and they have a deluxe food mixer and radio cassette built in t with a built-in TV and a dishwasher uh, and now one of these families is going to go through the 300 barrier once they get past 300 quid which they keep then they get to play for tonight's big money prize of 1,500 pounds. To help them do that, we now play for double money. Here we go. Here's Nat, here's Anne. Ladies, two lovely ladies, wall-to-wall -wall pulchritude. I am ready with a question. We have 100 people surveyed. Top five answers are on the board. <laughs> I love the way this is phrased. Apart from family fortunes, name the biggest hit on television. Coronation Street. Coronation Street. Did any of the hundred people we asked the opinion of say Coronation Street? Top answer cannot be beaten. Play a pass. Hey, play, play, said the Evans family. No conferring by the Evans. The Weedock family may discuss this. We asked a hundred people. Name the biggest hit on television. What did they say? <laughs> Crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they said Coronation Street, how could they possibly not say Crossroads? Yes, there it is. This is your life. A tremendous success. Nearly always top at the ratings. Eamon Andrews? 
Surprisingly enough, they didn't say that was the biggest hit on television. That's the exact question. Top of the Pops. Top of the Pops has been a hit for a long, long time, and it looks like going on for a long, long time. Pop of the Tops. Yes. Five people said that. Five people. We double that up to double money. It's worth ten pounds, which goes into the bank. It's the fourth most popular answer. Wins you. Have you got a lawn? Yeah, you, know, you now have a, a 12 inch electric lawnmower to cut it with. Oh, yeah, and it's an empty one. Philip. We asked 100 people, name the biggest hit on television. The news. The news is the biggest hit on television. <laughs> Sometimes you see people getting the biggest hits on television. On the news, <laughs> two lives lost. We Duck Family could be your chance to steal. There's already 124 pounds in the bank. The Sweeney? Hoping over here to see the Sweeney. <laughs> we didn't see it. We Duck Family. Mike, do you have an answer? The sale of the century, we the say. The sale about. of the century. What an extraordinary answer. <laughs> You, even if it's right, you're not going to win. <laughs> Sale of the century. <laughs> not fair. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? What else? Did you have any other answers? That's Jenny? life. That's life, of course, with Esther Ranson could be there. Oh, and a lot of answers coming from our studio audience. Answer number five in our survey was... Roots. Roots. Yes. It was a big hit. That was the question. A big hit. And it was a sensation, Roots, when it happened. A big hit. The, most sec the second most popular answer we got was... Yeah. Yeah. Of course! Well, we're happy. We're, we, if we want to hit, we better play on. Next round, please. Double money. <laughs> Captain, we're Liz. Ladies, 100 people surveyed. You only have to find three answers. Name any decoration awarded for bravery. I know George it. George Cross. The George Cross. Let's see if it's there. Did any of our 100 people surveyed say the George Cross? <laughs> yes, they did. That gives you a prize of a beauty set, which you don't need, and a hood hair dryer, which might come in handy. It would be a nice thing for the Evans family if you came up with number one. The award for peace, um... The, the award for peace. Any award for peace is covered. No bell for peace. No, that's, that's the one you were thinking of. All right, let's see if it's there. If it rings the bell, maybe it's no bell. We'll find out. The peace prize. <laughs> not there. That's not for bravery. Do you want to play or pass? Play. Play, play. play say the Weedock family. You go back to your position and right away, Mike, who said play, is ready to come up with an answer. Name any decoration awarded for bravery. The Victoria Cross. The Victoria Cross. VC! <laughs> 144 pounds that's worth, which means half that number of people gave us that answer. The DFC. The DFC, the Distinguished Flying Cross. <laughs> Not there, we've only lost one life. We still have a chance here, Norman. A decoration. Why is that going to be a medal? A George Medal. A George Medal, medal. that's distinct from the George Cross. A George Medal? Two lives lost. Evans family could be your chance. There's 182 pounds up there in the bank. Nobody owns it yet. And isn't this a tough position to be in? Game point, everything depending on it. So I'll keep quiet while you give it three seconds of deep thought, a decoration awarded for bravery. The third life has been lost here, Don. DSO. The DSO. If the DSO is the missing answer, you get the 182 pounds in the bank. If it is the, not that missing answer, that 182 pounds will go to the Weedock family. They'll play for 1,500 pounds jackpot tonight. They believe it is the DSO over that side. Let's find out. DSO? <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> right? What decoration is awarded for bravery? A black eye? A military cross? Answer number three, the public gave us. Yes, the military cross, you're absolutely right. Well, now you have 367 pounds. You're going to play for a further 1,500 tonight. And here, Don, what a pleasure to see your family from South Wales. Here's a picture of yourselves and the Weedock family, which we hope you'll take away a copy of that photograph, all of them framed, of course. You have won individual prizes of a child's bike and teddy bear, pic picnic hamper with binoculars there, Philip. You'll enjoy that. You've got a 12-inch lawnmower, I'm delighted to say. And you have 213 pounds in cash. Worth playing the game? Certainly. Enjoy yourself. Great, lovely day. Lovely having you with us. Thanks for coming. Bye. Who's going to play for the big money? My Jackie and my sister-in-law, Anne. Anne and Jackie, front and centre, please. You're going to ask a 
questions first? Jackie, you stand next to me. Anne, would you go off and wear the headset and put on the blindfold? Well, it's a little warm in the studio tonight, but it's not going to get any cooler for the next few seconds because we have 100 people surveyed, five questions have been put to those 100 people, their answers are in Mr. Babbage, our computer. Now it's up to Jackie here to come up with the same five answers that figure in top position on our survey if she can. Lots of lovely, obvious answers, give me. You've got 15 seconds to do it in, and the 15 seconds won't begin to tick away till I've finished reading the first question. If you can't answer a question, it really gets stuck. Just say pass and I'll move to the next one. Clear your mind and have a go at the second one. Ready? Yes. 15 seconds on the clock I have. Name something that tourists buy as a souvenir when visiting a big city. Um, tea cloth. Tea something cloth. you can do with your old clothes. Given to a jungle site. Living or dead, name a famous songwriter. Oh, um, George Bush. Any kind of sugar. Um, white sugar. Name a wise man. Ah, uh. we ran out of time. <laughs> Is that pause on the songwriter or the old clothes? I'm not Jackie, we asked you, I love calling you Jackie because it's my wife's name and I love her too. We asked you to name something tourists buy as a souvenir when visiting a big city and you said, table, tea cloths. Uh, so we said, yeah, you see a lot of those decorative tea cloths, but only five people out of a hundred gave us that answer. We said, what do you do with your old clothes? You said, you give them to the jumble. Our survey said, yes, 49 people out of a hundred said the very same thing. We asked you to name any famous songwriter. And you said, the immortal George Gershwin. No. Uh, so he said, <laughs> that hurts me. One of the greatest songwriters ever lived. Name any kind of sugar, we said. You said, white sugar. Uh, so he said, <laughs> I'm baffled by both those zeros. We asked you to name any wise man well. We didn't get to that. We have to have a pass there and put a zero. We have 54. We're over a quarter of the way to that 200. You never know, we might do it yet. Jackie, back to your family. Clear the board, please. <laughs> Sister-in-law Anne has to make up the difference, and it's quite a big difference of 146 points to get to 200 in order to win the 1,500-pound big money prize. So here comes Anne. <laughs> Let's remind the viewers of the answers that Jackie gave us, which were worth 54, Anne. So yes. you've got to try and come up with answers worth 146. It is possible, I promise you, you can do it. You have 20 seconds in which to do it, because if you duplicate any of the answers we got from Jackie, you'll hear this sound, and I say try again, and you have to give me a second guess. But clear your mind of everything but what I'm saying, concentrate on the subject, and just think of the most obvious thing you can think of, just the obvious thing, and you'll win. 20 seconds on the clock, please. And name something that tourists buy as a souvenir when visiting a big city. Badges. Something you can do with your old clothes. Given to rummage sale. Nibbling or dead, name any famous songwriter. Uh, Tchaikovsky. Any kind of sugar. Demerara. A wise man. Uh, any wise man. Um, ah, you don't know any. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> Let's see how well we do that. Those are the answers we got from Jackie. You can see they add up to 54 points. Let's see if you did better. And they were uh, quite tricky ones. We asked you to name something that people buy, tourists, as a souvenir when they visit a big city. You gave us a good answer. You said, badges. I said, we said, <laughs> the top answer there, postcards, was worth 51. Oh, I know, now it's... We said, name something you do with your old clothes. You said, you give them to the rummage, different from the jumble, because they're two different words, and both words could have occurred in our survey. Our survey said, <laughs> the word rummage did not occur. Jumble did, rummage did not. But had rummage occurred in our survey, it would have been there and it would have been worth points. We asked you to name a famous songwriter. You said, Tchaikovsky. And certainly many of his melodies have been used in popular songs. Our survey said, <laughs> no, it's not a name they gave. The top answer there was Paul McCartney with a score of 35. We asked you to name any kind of sugar. You said, Demerara. Have heart, it's got to be a good answer. Our survey said, oh yes, how about that? Our final question is to name a wise man, and you couldn't think of a wise man, you didn't even think of me. 
Well, the public gave us the answer, Solomon, and it was worth 37 points. You have 97 there, so we'll double that 97. Re bear in mind that your family, the Weedock family, have done well tonight. You have individual prizes of a deluxe food mixer, the radio cassette with the built-in TV, and that's a cracker. You've got a tabletop dishwasher. I think you'll be pleased with that. And the beauty set dryer, don't forget that. So we'll double the 97 pounds you've won in the big money game. <laughs> and smile. We're going to add it to the 367 that you won in the family game. Why, we have a Weedock family fortune of... Five hundred and sixty-one pounds. Congratulations. Oh, I like that. Well done, Mike. Well played. Thank you, well played to you too, Catherine. Thank you, darling. Jackie, you did well. Well played, Norman. You've been a smashing family. It's been fun being with you. Next week, our big money prize is two thousand pounds. Join us on Family Fortunes, please.